Many years have passed since I was last in his arms, but I remember it like it was yesterday. We were to be married, he was to be my consort, but at the last minute he ran off without a word. I would have killed him if I could, I just didn't have the heart. Did I love him? Of course I did, and I suppose I still do. He's handsome, intelligent, and did everything in his power to claim my heart. But he has hurt me so, so many times. He left me at the altar, stranded me in the cloudy nebulas, and rejected my advances in front of my court. I have no reason to still love him, but here's the thing. I think of him every day. I think of what could have been. We could have had a family together, and I would have been the happiest woman in the world. I... I know it sounds stupid, but maybe, just maybe, that is still possible. Hey guys, it's Flower Gothic, and today, be talking about a little known cartoon from the 2000s that shaped my entire life. It was something special, something that inspired me when I discovered it and resulted in the beginning of this very channel. I'm talking, of course, of Cartoon Network's Duck Dodgers. None of y'all have probably heard of this show, so I'm going to start by giving some context. And information on it was limited, so I apologize for the lack of sources. Duck Dodgers was originally a Looney Tunes short from 1953 by animation legend Chuck Jones called Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century. It was a parody of the space opera character Buck Rogers, a 20th century man frozen for 500 years and reawakened to go on SPACE ADVENTURES! The short, however, followed a simple plot. Duck Dodgers, aka Daffy Duck, is said to find the last of an atom on Planet X. He, along with his eager young space cadet, aka Porky Pig, find it after a bit of directional trouble, but oh noes! Marvin the Martian shows up in one of his first appearances and fights to claim Planet X for Mars. Shenanigans ensue, obviously. Little does he realize that I have on my disintegration proof vest. <laughs> You may fire when ready, Grizzly. The short got rave reviews, and a sequel was made in 1980, and a Tiny Toots parody of it was made in 1990. In 1994, the original short was listed on Turner Publishing's 50 Best Cartoons at fourth place. So in comes Spike Brand and Tony Cervone in 1997. They saw the potential in reviving Duck Dodgers and worked hard on turning it into a full-blown series. Spike Brandit and Tony Cervone were no strangers to the Looney Tunes or Cartoon Network. Not only were they writers for 1995's The Cartoon Cartoon Show, but they both also worked on 1996's Space Jam. They expanded on Dodgers' character art, kinda, and added new characters like Resident Chad, Star Johnson. The first season was released in 2003, receiving positive reviews, and a second was ordered. The second was intended to be the last, but Cartoon Network ordered a third. Then they cancelled it and aired the last episodes on Boomerang to forget their decision. We'll get to how that turned out later. However, two unsung heroes of the show, at least according to a large portion of its cult fanbase, were Paul Denny and Tom Minton credited as the producers for the first two seasons. Both had more creative work on their resumes by the 2000s, with Denny having served as a writer for the two 90s Batman shows, and also creating Harley Quinn, and Minton writing and storyboarding for Mighty Mouse, The New Adventures, and Animaniacs. When they left the show after the second season, it fucking showed. But again, more on that later. But after 2006, the show just vanished. It aired reruns on Boomerang back when the channel was actually good until March of 2010. And that's how I found the show. 
Before it was taken off syndication, I got my hands on six of the episodes from season three, and I got hooked. <laughs> I'd watch those episodes over and over again in my parents' bedroom, and I watched even more when I found them on YouTube. This makes me old, doesn't it? <laughs> and remember this? Tyranny, which I used on my first DeviantArt account in some other places, was named after a character from an obscure Cartoon Network show none of y'all have heard about. It was from this show that I took my secondary name. That's how much it meant to me. As I grew up, however, I started to repress my young adolescence. I was obsessed with this show and others to an unhealthy degree. You'll see what I mean when I get into it. So I stopped watching it and moved on to other ventures. But it's been 10 years since I was first attached to it. Today, at the ripe age of 20, I want to put this part of me to peace. Let's dive in and see what this show is all about. I dreamt about you again last night. It was the day we were to be wed. I was wearing that pastel green gown you adored so much and carrying a bouquet of the finest earth flowers. Your eyes teared up as I walked down the aisle and I could almost make out you saying, this is it, I I'm finally marrying my one true love. But as we were to exchange our vows, you vanished out of thin air, poof. I was devastated. My heart sank to my stomach and I was worried I'd throw up. I awakened shortly afterwards and all I could think about was your name, Dodgers. Dodgers, my love, my one and only. We were close to marriage many times, but you always broke my heart at the end. Yet, I still love you. Because I know most of y'all aren't familiar with the show, let me introduce to you the main characters first. The Chad. Captain Duck, Edgar Dumas, Aloysius, Elgin, Dodgers or just Dodgers for short. He's basically Daffy Duck in space! But Dumber, and slightly less of an anti-hero. But think about his position. He's a moron who, through sheer unpredictability, completely obliterates the Martians. It's fucking genius and says a lot about how society has changed in the 2350s. The Virgin, eager young space cadet. He's the ace who ensures Dodgers does it you know, cannibalize his own or something. He's beaten up a lot, but takes it in stride. Does that make him a beta male instead? Discuss. Then we have IQ High. Yes, really. He's like the commander slash higher up for Dodgers. He's also a scientist. That's all you need to know. Oh, he did free Dodgers thinking he was some 20th century hero. Oh lord. Chad Star Johnson, as I've mentioned before, also exists. He's Zap Brannigan without the ego and incompetence. That's it. And now let's go to Mars! We have Marvin the I, I made Commander X2. X2 is rather competent, but has no respect from his sentient robot army. He is also a lot like Sailor Jupiter in terms of hidden depths. For instance, I'm a novice gourmet chef. Did you know that? And I sculpt clay unicorns. Let's do this! Huh? Let's do what now? You know what? Clean up this big mess, of course. And we've got... Oh, Lord. I have to sink my teeth into this and reveal more of my embarrassing past. Yay! This is Tyranny, the Martian Queen, and my absolute obsession from 2010 to 2013. She is the leading voice of reason in the show and the main source of fan service, resulting in my first exposure to fetish art. But that's not all. I wrote fanfics where I was her secret daughter, long lost princess of Mars, Madison Losette, trapped in 21st century Earth with my younger twin brother, Niall, who was based off a boy I went to elementary school with whom I will not name. I made my own little world in my head revolving around her. I would have space adventures with all of the palace staff and even witness my mom giving birth to her fourth child. 
I was in deep psychosis, I tell you. It was scary. And that's why this video is me making peace with my childhood. It was an obsession and addiction. And I don't want to associate this good show with my delusional past. I don't remember how long I've been stuck here, but I do remember what happened. I was, I was, I was standing on my balcony after working out and I saw you bloodied and beaten by the great Satops. I jumped and raced to your aid, brandishing my sword to slaughter the beast once and for all. But then I was struck by it and fainted. And when I woke up, I was in the middle of this park and it took me days to realize I was blasted back to the ancient year of 2020. The first episode was The Trial of Duck Dodgers. It's considered the third episode in some circles, but canonically, this as the first episode makes more sense, so we'll be going with that. Deal with it. And for reference on how much I've repressed this show, I spent 10 minutes after the opening theme on Discord and looking at Pop-Tarts memes. But I digress. We start with Dodgers explaining his backstory in more detail, establishing him as a 20th century relic who became a captain for what they call the Galactic Protectorate, but due to recent events, I'm gonna call it the Space Force. Deal with it. And now, he's on trial. For what? Let's find out. I charge Duck Dodgers with gross incompetence and the dereliction of duty in fighting the Martians. After IQ does a shitty witness testimony, we learn the story. Dodgers was assigned to do Moon Patrol, aka Night Guard camping by the moon to prevent Martian attacks. This goes as well as you think. <laughs> what does he do in that bathroom? Engine noises? Why there shouldn't be another ship for... Miles. <laughs> So Dodgers attempts to flee in panic, but remember that X2 is actually competent and fucks up the Earth ship. The cadet attempts to illegally deploy the emergency shields for the planet and actually succeeds. And the shield is ready to be energized now. JK, the shield is fucked. We cut back to present day, revealing that a freak Accident stopped this attack. Dodgers claims he himself was the cause of the accident. How? I call my one and only surprise witness, the Martian Queen. I sure hope Dodgers knows what he's doing. IQ, does Dodgers ever know what he's doing? He's calling the enemy as a witness and is giving me awkward flashbacks. And it takes about 10 seconds for Dodgers to fuck up. Don't try and pull any of your Martian tricks. Identify yourself. Now, normally, someone would slap him for his bullshit. But we have the rest of the story to cover. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to see is a compilation of Protectorate and Martian hollow records that will reveal the truth. What's in the hold? Yeah, 473,000 pounds of it will be a russet Idaho potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> I, I guess the Earth really is doomed. Maybe, but then again, maybe not. Meet me in the cargo hold. And don't forget your potato peeler. Yep, they're gonna use potatoes to stop the Martians. How? The cadet peels every single potato and piles them into the launcher while stalling the Martians, who are choosing their weapons. The weapons are ready, Commander. On my command... Fire! <laughs> Dodgers launches the potatoes into the Martian firing holes, resulting in it raining chips! Hooray! It's raining men! Hallelujah, it's raining men! And so Dodgers is acquitted. The end. This episode shows something about his character. He's lazy, vain, and stupid. But he can actually save the Earth despite his misadventures, resulting in a hilarious show! And the fun of it is that it's the Looney Tunes in space! 
They subvert every expectation of a sci-fi show and I live for it. Throughout this season, he also is called to a slug planet, freezes them before learning they aren't the invaders and that these hot bug ladies are. He then tries to sleep with them. They instead try to cook him and return to their true forms after some BDSM jokes. The cadet is then forced to save him. What is this name? Roboto and uses him as a slave, but soon calls him friend. They invade a Martian battle station and it goes well because Roboto. So the doctors comes to resent him. This results in a series of misadventures until Roboto sacrifices himself by flying into a meteor. And yes, this was a parody of the Iron Giant. He uses his ship's energy to vandalize an asteroid, which causes him to lose power. After allegedly two years of no one coming to find them, doctors gets connected to dress and drag to distract X2 while he steals another engine. Though I personally find it requested by the flight. president of outer space to transfer an attractive special agent to a Martian-controlled planet. He falls in love with her and grows about as clinky as you'd expect from a man duckling. Thus, Cadet is forced to repeatedly defeat the Martians. That's all I have for this episode. The video broke halfway through. Fox up an experiment. experiment that's released in a virus where he and Cadet quickly grow older. So they must break into the Martian palace to try and reverse the effects. X2 is also there, and as a result of the virus, quickly grows younger. Shenanigans ensue. There's some subversive comedy and the first reveal of X2's love for Tyranny, which is sweet. It's hypnotized by a Dracula ripoff that feeds on fat instead of blood because it's a kid's show and it needs to be TVY7. The vampire forces Dodgers to try and get him to lure the Cadet into his fat trap. Apparently, Cadet has also cured rolled hunger, and that's never brought up again. Anyway, shenanigans ensue. And more, including a hilarious Green Lantern parody I highly recommend. Then, one day, Dodgers is kidnapped by tyranny! Will he be killed? Tortured? Well... Stop this outrage! He is your future king! So, spoiler... Tyranny is in love with Dodgers. I'm not kidding. This seems to come out of left field, but it works. Okay, hear me out. In the first episode, it's established that Mars has the power to destroy Earth and kill Dodgers. Tyranny herself never orders X2 or anyone to do so. Why? Well, she sees his obvious incompetence as some kind of grand scheme to win her heart. And given that he saves the day at times, she isn't that wrong about his accomplishments. After all, if Earth was destroyed, Dodgers would die and she would be heartbroken. And as a child, I shipped it. I thought they were super cute together and that Dodgers would make a great stepfather. Having three children with her as cute little half-siblings I could also go on adventures with. Moving on. In the episode before this, quarterback Quack, she orders X2 to go back in time not to kill Dodgers, but to prevent him from winning a football game. Something relatively minor in historical context. I'm not saying that the implementation is perfect. It opens up a few plot holes, more if you assume X2 is always following Tyranny's orders, but this arc is hilarious and heartbreaking. So let's dissect it. One thing I didn't notice until rewatching this is that Tyranny is quick to assume Dodgers would accept her affections. That's a bit yandere-ish, but I can forgive that as she has shown bits of cruelty before. After all, she ordered his kidnapping. She didn't just waltz down to his house and confess her feelings. Dodgers gets on board, though, when he realizes he'll get power and wealth. But there's a catch. But before we wed, you must face three Martian trials. That's right, three trials to get in the space babe's bed. This'll be a piece of cake. So after pinging a surprisingly unworried cadet, we learned that X2 was demoted to Dodger's slave. Wait, how does the Martian military hierarchy work? No way, Tyranny said she'd punish him for hurting her beloved. This makes sense. Moving on, we get to the first trial, the test of combat. Dodgers must face the Cyclops Satyr hybrid, the Satops, for the Queen's heart. Now, we know Dodgers is weak and unathletic and an all-around loser, so how does he do it? Say, did you ever notice the unsightly wax build up in your ears? Uh, huh? I can help you out. <laughs> yeah? Sure can, bright eye. Just one scrape with this electro swabby doohickey will fix you up as easy as one, two, three! That's right, he pulls a Bugs Bunny and crushes him by trickery. Hey, it wasn't the test of physical combat, wink! Next comes the test of endurance. Dodgers and his slave must travel through the scorching Martian desert. Can he do it without water? Well... 
I said, do we have any water? No water, Master. Oh. Well, I guess I'll just have to eat these babies dry. What? Yes, Dodgers, it's time for some salty snacks without water. To be fair, Mars is farther from the sun than Earth. The heat probably isn't as unbearable. And also, he has a timeshare in Palm Springs. Really. How are you doing? What, the heat? This is nothing. I've got a timeshare in Palm Springs. <laughs> hey, I, I get it. I've been to Palm Springs before. It's all desert, but a lovely place. I'd go there again. Then comes the test of logic. Dodgers has to beat these three wise sages in one of those card flash games. Does he do it? Show me the lucky lady. Right here, Chief. <gasps> I guess all those years I spent as a transient carnival worker finally paid off. Yep. He used to work as a Cardi too. He did it! Yay! But X2 has a trick up his sleeve. He convinces Dodgers that he must oversee the methane farms of Uranus. <laughs> Disgusted, he ditches the queen and returns to his job. The status quo is restored, right? Well, no! The next episode is semi-filler, but a good view of how Tierney's view of Dodgers changed. Dodgers goes to PLANET HOLLYWOOD! So this stereotypically sleazy producer can make a movie based on his memoir. In reality, the producer has been tasked with KILLING DODGERS in exchange for Martian movie funding. This is the first episode in the series where the Martians explicitly task someone with killing him. It goes about as well as you'd think. After that, we get the Queen is Wild. Tyranny is obviously pissed about being broken up with, and since Planet Hollywood failed, she chooses to take matters in her own hands and kidnaps the cadet after coping by continuously murdering robot ducks. So she and the real Dodgers duke it out on the planet Fragonia 7. Yuck, as you'd expect in a serious situation. Of course, not quite bigger than life, but you get the concept. Let me reiterate. The Queen has dressed in her sexy battle armor to take her revenge on Dodgers, and he's not taking her seriously at all. That's the genius of this show, making serious things silly. You'd expect him to go all Bethesda Fallout on her, but nope! He beats her just by throwing an icicle at her, then shooting down the cell cadets in. Then they have an Epic, high-speed space chase ending up in a space cloud. Tierney hesitates to finish him because she still loves him. But Dodgers uses it as a tactical advantage, disabling her ship instead of reconciling with her. A depressing end to an otherwise hilarious episode. And after some contemplation, she decides to take him back. Unfortunately, this isn't really developed. Which brings us to... How are you doing without me, my love? Reckon you must be as heartbroken as I am. But I can't know for sure, after all. You've broken my heart many, many times. I can't even count the times you left me at the altar anymore. Whenever you were away, however, there was one guy, one guy, who was always there to wipe my tears. Overall, Season 2 takes advantage of much more sources for the sake of comedy, unlike just the Looney Tunes. The season premiere, Pig Planet for example, takes humor from an unexpected side of Cadet in that he's a prince from a planet populated by pigs. PUNNY! It's a fun episode where we learn more about Cadet's personal morals and how he's not much for Captain Material. They even have a funny sequence of fantastic racism! Alright, spread out. What's gotten into you, walking pork chops? They engage in a lot of parody, too. Invictus Interruptus puts Dodgers in a position to destroy a Death Star parody, which is even lampshaded! Ah, uh, another delusional fan trying to emulate the famous trench scene. It doesn't do much in terms of the long-term narrative, but it's still hilarious. It also includes a lot of meta-humor, 
which is mostly from Dodgers himself. It's like he assumes that everything going on is just a show and that there are no real consequences for his actions, which entirely justifies his irrational behavior. The two best episodes in the season before the finale are The Love Duck and Samurai Quack. The Love Duck is a parody of a 70s show kids have probably never heard of, The Love Duck. on a luxury cruise ship. Ask your boomer friends about it. So the episode involves Dodgers while on a normal delivery run, learning about how profitable luxury cruises are. He uses this to take advantage of rich people to get that sweet cash dough. It's very, it's always sunny in Philadelphia while trying to ensure IQ doesn't know anything. The cadet even shows his skills as the ace and Dodgers comes up with various ways to fuck up and manages to get chased by X2. I'm not gonna spoil the jokes, just, just watch this episode, it's hilarious. Samurai Quack is exactly what it says on the tin, a Samurai Jack parody with help from the show's creator himself. After Dodgers passes out for bad sushi, he enters the world of Samurai Jack as, well, Samurai Quack. And this is one of the very, very rare occasions I'll recommend a Mysterious Mr. Enter video. He does a good job, for once, at dissecting this episode. This leads us to... The commander has been there every time Dodgers broke my heart. He wiped away my tears, sympathized with my pain, and helped me back on my feet. We were even to be wed once, but I just couldn't get over Dodgers. I dreamt the night before, frolicking on a beach with him, running and laughing and playing. But Dodgers rejected me yet again at the altar. And that time, you weren't there to comfort me. I guess I deserved it. I did break your heart. The original series finale wrapped the series up in a lovely bow, establishing one of the best instances of character development, conflict, and resolution I've seen. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It starts with a grand opportunity, a peace treaty between Earth and Mars. It's a historical event with the president of outer space, Star Johnson, IQ, and his brother, PsyQ, and probably more members of the Space Force! And then, we meet a new character, General Z9 of the Martian Empire. And here's one of my few problems with this episode. Z9 is brand new, never seen or mentioned before. Spoiler, he's the antagonist of the story. And I really don't know what his motivations are. Power, perhaps? What caused him to... Be the villain he was. It's quite sad, especially since I'm a sucker for character arcs. It saddened me in my childhood too, so I made my own backstory for him. Z9 was Tyranny's former lover and the biological father of Madison and Niall. She broke up with him shortly after falling pregnant, which angered him as he thought they were meant to be. His motive is to get revenge over a broken heart, obtaining a new identity and moving up in her ranks without her knowing. Dodgers is on his way to the treaty with Pez after having to fight nose aliens after insulting them. And we see his thoughts on the upcoming ceremony. But if there's peace, the defense budget will be cut. There'll be layoffs, downsizing. I could lose my job. Yeah, he's self-aware that he could become a disposable asset once the treaty is signed. What does he do? He fucks with the Pez, but not before this bit. Whether at war or in peace, I shall always loathe you. You shall always love me? Ew! I said loathe, you idiot. This sets up a chain reaction that'll go down in history as one of the funniest, saddest, and heartwarming series finales in history. <laughs> tragedy is soon traced to Dodgers himself, unfortunately. Cadet promises him to take the blame. 
which Dodgers takes to the extreme, resulting in the former's arrest and imprisonment, breaking the poor fellow in a 21st century prison. Meanwhile, Star Johnson, remember him, has been sent to Mars in order to negotiate the treaty. Z9 intervenes with his new Chad power and says he will only work with Dodgers. He has also apparently reprogrammed all the robots. Holy fuck, how much trust is Tyranny putting in him and his humanoid robot female sidekick? Dodgers is promoted to Admiral, despite having a tinge of regret in his heart. How? Z9 coerced, I, I mean convinced IQ to do so. If this doesn't spell evil scheme, I don't know what will. See you on Mars tomorrow, when you and I will sign the peace treaty between our worlds. Note that Z9 said, tomorrow. Everything you're about to see goes down in two enticing, glorious days. Unless the writers couldn't do math. But I digress. As a result, IQ is contractually obligated to give Dodgers the defense codes to access Earth through its shield. He is not supposed to trust any Martian with any of them until the peace treaty is signed. Coincidentally, this suitcase is also what Dodgers uses to keep his laundry intact. We'll get to why that's important later. So Star Johnson is... I don't know. When he finds out Z9 and sexy robots evil plan, who oh knows? Interplanetary conquest is on schedule. The Earthling Duck is an imbecile who will unwittingly surrender his planet to my rule. He tries to alert everyone, but he is caught and sent to prison as well. How fitting. However, X2 catches wind of this and sheds a tear, showing his love for the queen. That night, Dodgers is haunted by what he did to Cadet and goes to see Psyche High. I can't sleep. I'm up all night watching 350-year-old reruns of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Thoughts of self-loathing won't leave me alone. What can I do? After discussing his love for Melissa and Joan Hart, Psy links their minds together to try and find out what's wrong. This goes as well as you think. Sweeties, ladies, dames, chicks, Melissa Joan Hart. <laughs> he does see the light at the end of the tunnel, though. After being hit with a board. Really. Therapy not yet approved by the Galactic Food and Drug Administration. If I'm ever going to be able to live with myself, I have to save my bestest pal in the whole galaxy. Cadet. Speaking of, Cadet finally snaps in prison and somehow becomes top bitch by the time Star Johnson arrives. Meanwhile, X2 tries to warn the Queen, but it's too late! Z9 is on the verge of stealing the throne and attacks him, then imprisons the queen. Dodgers then, in a rare act of bravery, fights tooth and nail to reclaim his ship. After much stress, he manages to escape in part two by destroying the magnet that tried to eat him alive. Then he manages to save X2 for a prison break. Hooray! Meanwhile, Tyranny has been officially captured, and Z9, in his taunts, reveals that X2 has loved her this whole time. End scene. Why am I always the last to know these things? <laughs> Once they get to the prison, Dodgers and X2 are almost killed, but they're discovered by a very broken cadet and a not as broken Star Johnson. Now hear this, space cadet! Rocket leaving for planet sanity! Boarding now! Uh oh, wait a minute, you're not taking any more orders from Lady and you. As expected, Dodgers is shit at getting Cadet back. He decides to come along to save the day, but doesn't restore their friendship until later. And now it's off to the Martian Palace. They all then split up. Dodgers and Cadet go and stall Z9, X2 finds the Queen, and Star hacks into the battle plans. Spoiler, it all works out. We even get another main character in drag. How progressive!
think so, General. Z9 captures the Queen again and steals Dodger's ship in order to actually invade the Earth. But remember those codes IQ entrusted Dodgers with? Z9 got Dodger's laundry instead. This results in a Star War with two brick jokes. Miss me, sweetum? I'm flattered. <laughs> what does Dodgers do in that bathroom? Dodgers, I loathe you. You love me? Yuck! What is it with you Martians? <laughs> Dodgers decides to sacrifice himself to save the world, and Cadet stays by his side, seeing his changes, and forgives him. And they did it! The ending news report shows the ceasefire going through, X2 and Tyranny establishing a relationship, Z9 getting arrested, and Dodgers being demoted back to Captain as a punishment for the whole ink thing. But this perfection was tarnished by its one arch nemesis. Season 3! Commander, wherever you are, I am so, so sorry for breaking your heart. What was the point, given that Dodgers rejected me right after I confessed my feelings? You didn't deserve that pain. You're a sweet, sweet man who deserves nothing but the best. Do you still love me? I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't. I mean, I've chased the same man for years and years without much success. Dodgers was a hero in my defense and he won my heart with his wits and charm. When I'm back, perhaps I'll give you a call. Yeah, they renewed the show for a third season for reasons, which meant that the grand finale had to be retconned, which meant that we got Till Doom Do Us Part. So how do they do it? They actually managed to pull it off. Kinda. So here's how it goes down. Dodgers, bored with a ceasefire, Hits up X2 just as he's proposing a tyranny. You're marrying him? Can you give me a reason not to? Well, I can give you thousands of reasons. Because you helped to bring us together by creating problems that we could deal with as a couple, I was wondering, would you be my best man? Nah, I hate weddings. Spoiler, he'll take up the best man opportunity later. Remember that. Then we meet our villain, or should I say, villains. They bring back several from the previous seasons, including Roboto. Yep, he finally realized that Dodgers hated him and attempted to kill him. So he bands together a bunch of people, including one of the sexy bug ladies and the fat-sucking vampire, who have also been wronged by Dodgers as well as Black Eel, who has no idea who Dodgers is and has a bitter rivalry with Seaman. <laughs> okay then, the first attempt at killing Dodgers comes when Cadet shows off his sudden new hobby, teaching randoms about caverns. This goes about as well as you think. <laughs> killed and Cadet is badly injured. And as IQ is AWOL for the rest of the episode, Cadet convinces Dodgers to take up X2's offer, giving a new plan to the Legion of Duck Doom. Hooray? This Roboto always has a meteor for special occasions. The Legion of Duck Doom will use this remote control to send Meteor to Mars and crush Duck Dodgers. Then Legion will help themselves to cake. <laughs> That night, Tyranny and Roboto both have a change of heart, realizing they both love Dodgers. Of course, in different ways, as this is 2005 and LGBT representation in kid shows wasn't mainstream yet, but you get my point. The wedding goes on, though, until Roboto warns Dodgers that his former friends were after him. This results in an epic battle, until the meteor is close. Roboto kills himself to save Dodgers from his own creation. Dodgers friend. And the others get arrested. And Tyranny? She calls off the wedding, declaring she loves Dodgers more. 
He takes this rather well. Nothing personal, but Duck Dodgers is strictly bachelor material. Why do you think I threw myself that bachelor party last night? Don't worry, Queen. Someday you'll find a fellow who's almost as good as me. If you're not too old by then. And thus, the peace treaty ends and everything goes back to normal. Now, this would have been a wonderful epilogue were it not for the two major retcons, Dodger's behavior and the peace treaty. If this were just a surprise special where some villains returned and attempted to kill a changed Dodgers, I wouldn't be so upset about it. But as a result of its actions, the season feels... subpar. At this point, Dinny and Minton left the show, and Brenda and Servone took a step back. They were still supervising Duck Dodgers and his adventures, but weren't involved in the actual writing, from what I can tell. This caused the series to stagnate and not be as clever or as funny as it used to be. Don't get me wrong, it still had its moments, but it became the shambling corpse of what it once was. Aside from a few surprisingly creative episodes we just don't have the time to get into. And then the show just ended. After it was pulled from syndication, Warner Bros. tried to forget about its existence. But fortunately, in 2013, the first two seasons were released on DVD. It took another seven years for them to release season three. But the entire series was also put on Amazon Prime Video in 2017. You need the boomerang add-on to actually watch it, but it's the thought that counts, I guess. Commander, you were wonderful to me. You always treated me like your one and only. You loved me for me, and not just for my body or power. Perhaps you were meant to be together, after all. Oh my, ha have I loved you this whole time? As I said before, the show left a deep impact on me, especially in regards to comedy and storytelling. It taught me that you can develop a comic relief, make parodies that are still faithful to the source material, and how to connect two seemingly unrelated plot lines. Sure, I sucked at all three initially, but this is what got the ball rolling. This was the show that got me into writing. This was the show that inspired me to create my own characters. This was the show that made me want to pursue a creative career. Hell, the meta humor and parody was what initially got me to reenact other people's fan fictions. So does a certain Ryan Elliott Stevens getting adopted by her daddy Adam Lambert and going on adventures with her favorite rock band. And regardless of its bumps along the way, I'll always love this show, even if I haven't been obsessed with it for years. I have! I have loved you this whole time, Commander! I am so sorry to have rejected you before! If only I could find a way to confess to you! for me? Is this my reward for finally finding my love? If so, I'll take it. I'm coming, my love! 